The state is an agent of evil that we must keep in check, is what Ben Shapiro will say before he breaks your neck for standing up against the state because he won't. These liberals hate the state until they don't. The people must be freed, they say, but please don't ever feed them. They prop up the police and then they say that they want freedom. The reason is they want this freedom only for themselves. The freedom to exploit the working class like Santa's elves. Anarchy for them and for the masses, stringent rules who they say need the discipline because they're gangsters, thugs, and fools. If the hungry ask for food, the welfare budget's far too tall, but if the hungry steal their food, the police budget's far too small. But there's another reason so-called libertarians love the state. They think their freedom comes from God and is a fact of fate. They think that they're created independent, proud, and free, and that a string of social contracts are what makes society. They know that every state was made with coercion and violence, but they think there stands agreement which each person signs in silence. Even the masses are both sacred godly souls as well as stupid, dumb, and weak who must deserve their social roles. Now consider modern people and tell me that it's apparent that they're all just independent and their beliefs are not their parents or their teachers or their friends or come from Twitter takes or pundits. They believe any idea as long as someone wants to fund it. For anarchists, a single person on their own is weak, and it's through collaboration that our freedom can be reached. For the individual to be free-willed and independent, he must be given tools to do so and when threatened to defend it. If he doesn't have these tools and isn't helped along from birth, then on his own he is the dumbest animal to walk the earth. Personal empowerment and concept of the self realistically is given to us each by someone else. A person can't achieve the power to secure her needs without an education. Through this training she is freed. And every person's liberty reflects the way they're treated by the people who uphold the dignity of those who need it. To believe in freedom is inherently collective, and freedom only makes sense from a socialist perspective. In the presence of a lion, to be free has little meaning, but with a person we can be free by the way that we are seen. And by viewing other people as deserving to be free, I can also generalize and apply this right to me. A man who conquers others doesn't have this understanding, and he loses for himself all of the freedom others can bring. The Greek and Roman people thought their gods gave them the right to enslave and conquer others who could not put up a fight, and in turn when they were conquered and enslaved by foreign states they didn't think they had the right to fight and not capitulate. How can I be free if other people sit in chains? And how can I feel free if others do not feel the same? Our freedom is material and positive and collective. Here are two ways that people can be free from this perspective. One, the freedom of us all to meet our needs. Through science, education, and prosperity, we're freed. Two, the freedom from authority and rule. By God, the king, or people using us as tools. Freedom from God comes first. He controls our life from birth. With a master up in heaven, we will be enslaved on earth. His agents and messiahs and divinely ordained judges impose themselves on freedom with their laws and mental dungeons. Then we must revolt against tyranny in any form, be it through the state officials or oppressive social norms. The culture is the harder of the two to overcome. Customs, morals, prejudice demand that you succumb. Infecting people's mind, the culture hurts our mental health. In order to break free, you must wage war within yourself. This culture can be used for good when used for good alone. But where it crushes freedom, it must be fought and overthrown. A child raised in igloos will grow up to be an Inuit, and a child raised by priests will grow up to be an idiot. A child raised by thieves will grow up to be a thief, and one that's taught that they should rule the earth grows up with this belief. To change your mind is possible. To escape the social binds, you must revolt against society to free your soul and mind. This war is hard to fight, and we must also fight the state. Luckily, the latter instills discontent and hate. Instead of tricking people into following its will, it simply forces you with weapons to obey and pay your bills. The state may try to do us good, and some may choose this course, but even helping people turns to evil when it's done with force. Society is more discreet, infecting every child, teaching them to think and speak and choose their favorite clothing style. Developed over ages, all our ancestors collected a pool of lessons, good and bad, and we must now dissect it. Every generation's done an unrequested favor and bestowed with raw material with which to do its moral labor. And when the future children come to inhabit the earth, it passes on this moral structure regardless of its worth. As the basis of humanity, it binds us to each other. We feel guilt and shame if we reject the ideas of our mothers. And so it seems expected that we submit to these systems. What's surprising is when we break free and seek out greater wisdom.